so this is going to be a contest response for Wade Bosch Iverson's overrated and underrated players. First, I'm going to start out with the overrated. And at point guard, I have Derek Fisher. I really don't see what's so great about Derek Fisher. I mean, I don't really think he would have gotten any rings without Kobe and Shaq. He doesn't really stand out in any statistical category. And people think of him as a good point guard. I still, I don't even know why he even has a job with any team right now. So that's it for him. At shooting guard, I have Joe Johnson. I mean, he's he's a, he's a good player, but like his contract is so so big and so bad. I mean, he has to be a superstar to really live up to that contract. And this year hasn't been like anything outstanding. I mean, he's a he's a clutch player. But he, he's having a harder time creating a shot than he used to, and he still gets paid a ton of money. I think that he's really overrated for that. Next we have uh, Steve Francis. And when you have the nickname The Franchise, you are expected to be The Franchise, and he never really lived up, lived up to his nickname. He got paid a ton of, money, ton of money by New York, and Houston got screwed over with him. Ah, uh, Houston, I think it was... Orlando, whoever traded for T-Mac, whatever. Or, uh, yeah, so, um, next is, uh, Power Forward. We have Carlos Boozer. I mean, he, he's just been basically a lazy shooter with no defense. That's pretty much his whole game. He can't, he can rebound sometimes. Yeah, this year he's having a good year, but that's because, uh, Noah has spent some time out and, um, Derrick Rose has spent some time out, so he's been called upon more to do good, but throughout his career, he's had a little to no defense, and, Tons of money. And then uh, rounding it out at center is Andre Bargnani. He was a former first-round pick, and basically all he's good for is shooting. And uh, this is, oh, doesn't have really have this. And you can see in his first two years, 11 points, 10 points. And um, and now he can't, even, he can't even shoot, and that's basically all he could do. He's supposed to be able to spread the floor and be with his shooting, and he can't even shoot anymore, so... His value is pretty much gone. And um, so that was a really big waste of number one pick on him. And for um, the sixth, sixth man wild card thing, I was, I was going to say the All-Star Weekend. All-Star Weekend, I honestly have no idea why people even watch it because the All-Star game is just, there's no competing. It's just all offense. No one is actually competing trying to win. It's I mean, you can see all the good players in the game, but I mean, nothing really... Besides some dunks and stuff, it's not really too exciting. And the slam dunk contest will never be, be valid until LeBron James dunks. I mean, nobody wants to watch all these uh, rookies and stuff doing the dunk contest. I want to see like LeBron James, Blake Griffin, and guys like that in the dunk contest. I also want to say, like, my overrated and underrated players of all time, I haven't been around too long, obviously. So, I mean, I haven't been watching basketball since only, like, the beginning of the two thousand like the early two thousands, so I can't really judge um overrated under player overrated underrated players from that long ago because I haven't really been able to watch them play that much. Okay, now on to the underrated players. First we have Sam Cassell. I mean he was a he was a great point guard. He aver he always was able to score a lot and he he could distribute. He just the offense ran through him with his the teams that he's on Milwaukee and a little bit on Minnesota, mostly on Milwaukee. I mean, I have like on the back you can see the stats from he's he averaged around 20 points. If my camera wants to focus, yeah, he always averaged around 20 points. You know, around anywhere between six and nine assists. He was a solid point guard. Never really got too much recognition. Next at the shooting guard was a guy who could really shoot, and that's Michael Red. I mean, he could he could shoot in the lights out, and he he was fantastic for Milwaukee. He scored a ton of points, him and the Cassell, and he never really got that much recognition for his shooting, shooting ability. That's pretty much for him. And then um, next at the small forward, we have uh, Sean Marion. Sean Marion really thrived under the run-and-gun offense with Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire, and he can pace to do everything. He can score, pass, rebound. He can play defense. I mean that this is one in his days of the Matrix with the Phoenix. Not not so much anymore. He's still a solid player right now, but he was much better when he was with Phoenix. Next, that um, we also I also 
had Jerry Stackhouse, him and Sean Marion for for small forward. And uh, Jerry Stackhouse, you don't really hear too much about him, but he could really he could really score a lot. And I picked a card that has like some of his stats on the back. You can see how much he he averaged like 20 points. He almost averaged 30 points that one year with the Pistons. And he got he had tons of um, he can average you know average a steal a game. That's good some good passing. So he is really underrated too. And um, power forward is a more recent player, and that's David West. He was basically you know if Chris Paul wasn't scoring, it was David West scoring when they were with the um, Hornets. And this year he has been really important for the Pacers with the injury with him and Paul George rising up with uh, Danny Granger being out. He's been able to score and has been really tough down low in the rebounds and whatnot. And then at center is one of the most underrated players in the league, I think, is Nikola Pekovic. He's probably one of the most underrated in the league right now. He, I mean, he just averages a double double pretty much. You can always count, you can count on him to be get about, you know, get like 15 and 10 on any given night. He, with Kevin Love being injured, he is the Minnesota Timberwolves this year. And Ricky Ruga being injured. He just, has been a monster, and he's just a solid brick wall down there in defense. I mean, he had a, I can't remember what game it was. I know it was against the Pistons, and he just basically just took down Brandon Knight. That just goes to show how, how much of a monster, solid wall he is. And he can score and rebound, too. So, And then for the sixth man position, I was, um, I wanted to put in, uh, the general manager of the Thunder, Sam Presti. I mean, he he's probably the most well known, but I don't think he can ever he will ever be able to get enough recognition for how he's turned uh, that Thunder franchise when they were the Supersonics. He basically turned them upside down from like a bottom feeder to a contender, ch title contender within a few years. I mean, he drafted Ibaka and Harden and Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, and some of the other guys that he drafted, like Jeff Green and. Quincy Pondexter, he drafted like basically every draft pick he's 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 ever had has become to be an NBA player, at least some kind of some kind of contributor. I mean, he drafted at, at Reggie Jackson, Eric Mayner, guys like that, and he didn't he was made the Thunder um, a title contender, and he even dealt with the James Harden situation. He was even able to get a good deal out of that, getting Kevin Martin and a ton of draft picks and stuff. I mean, that could have gone real ugly like the Dwight Howard trade, but he still made it manageable. So that's pretty much it. That's my top 10 for overrated and underrated.